thought that I was becoming somewhat successful in this business. And tonight, for me, I just wanted to be in a room of people that appreciate and love her. Well, you picked the right place. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, this is all we want to do, <laughs> is just honor really, really talented people. Fantastic. <laughs> and thank you all for doing it. Thank you. Now, um, I heard that you just got cast on Big Little Lies. Is that yes, right? Yes, I did. Oh, how fun. That it's show is fantastic. so good. Fantastic. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful, full of powerful women. And what I love about it is that I have gone from one powerful show to another with uh, two of my bosses being Oprah and Tyler. Yep. And now Tyler Perry. Yes, Tyler Perry. <laughs> and Reese Witherspoon and um, Nicole Kidman. Um, you're yeah. doing all right, I feel just like. Just a little bit, mm -hmm. but it took a long time. Yeah. So what was it that you, do you think you got some of the drive that Nina um, had in her growing up? I hope so. I think so because it takes a lot to persevere. Yeah. That's the other thing. That's another reason I wanted to be here. It's a, it, it's a huge statement for perseverance. This is not an easy business no, to it be is in, not. this no, entertainment it is not. business. No. What do you think is the hardest part? Honestly, persevering, yeah. especially. Um, people say reinventing yourself, but I don't know if that's it. You just keep doing your work, doing your work and showing up and hopefully what you put out there people like and they will appreciate it and say thank you like today you yes. have a very positive attitude this is really really nice not everybody <laughs> has that you know how do you keep it Let's just say this is what it's like today yeah. there have been some really really hard days I'm a really sure, really hard yeah. day but but I, I it would be crazy for me not to be as grateful as I am today. I'm very blessed today. But I've been doing this for 38 years. So I have persevered to this point, just like Aunt Nina did, too. And she hasn't been here to see how many, how much people still love her. Right. Oh. And that's what I wish she could see today. They really, really do. What, what do you think she'd be saying right now? <laughs> Seriously? Yep. She would be like, it's about time. <laughs> It's about damn time. <laughs> yes, she would. <laughs> She's so great. Do you have a favorite song of hers? Oh, my goodness. Um, believe it or not, I sang it for her because she asked me, how to, did I sing? And I said, and did I sing her music? And I said, no, because you're Nina Simone. But it's a song called um, Turning Point. Yeah. And it's about a child realizing what prejudice is for the first time. And it's unspoken, but it's fabulous. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. She's wonderful. You're wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by. You look by. fabulous. Thank you. you I love too. our colors. <laughs> We're That's, matching. Yeah. <laughs> we decided to be awesome on the red carpet. I love, I love it. I love it. Have fun tonight. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, you guys, she's known as the High Priestess of Soul and another first ballot inductee. Let's take a look at how Nina Simone created her legacy and why she remains one of the most influential and uniquely original voices today. Ain't got no home, ain't got no shoes, ain't got no money, ain't got no class. What I hope to do all the time is to be so completely myself that my audiences and even people who meet me are confronted. They're confronted with what I am, inside and out, as honest as I can be. In this way, they have to see things about themselves. I ain't got no culture, ain't got no mother, ain't got no father, ain't got no brother. Everybody is half dead. Everybody avoids everybody. All over the place, in most situations, most all of the time. I know I'm one of those everybody. And to me, it is terrible. And so all I'm trying to do all the time is just to open people up so they can feel themselves and let themselves be open to somebody else. That is all. That's it. Nina Simone had such an incredibly powerful voice. She was classically trained, and she was known as the High Priestess of Soul. She took an incredible ability to take that powerful voice, but connect to people. And it's not an accident that she became one of the soundtracks of the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, she was an inspiration for so many at the time, and continues to be. Artists like Lauryn Hill, Kanye West, John Legend, Common, Alicia Keys, they all look back at Nina Simone as a foundation of the sound uh, that they had. Nina Simone had some groundbreaking songs like Mississippi Goddamn and Four Women, and these defined a particular voice in songwriting that was defiantly black and female. Email. I got my hair, I got my hair, I got my race, I got my hair, I got my eyes, I got my nose, I got my mouth, I got my, I got my sex, I got my arms, I got my hands, I got my fingers, I got my legs, I got my feet, I got my toes, I got my liver, I got my blood, I got life. So 
as far as I'm concerned, my music is addressed to my people, especially to make them more curious about where they came from. Who am I? Where did I come from? You know, do I really like me? And why do I like me? And uh, like, you know, if I am black and beautiful, I really am, and I know it, and I don't care who cares, says what. That's what my songs are about, and it is addressed to black people. And I feel that it is the that I have a reason, that there is a reason why I'm alive and on this particular plan, though I would not tell you that I came from here. I don't think I came from here at all. <laughs> I really don't. trip to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yet. The iconic building is alive with the energy and passion and the spirit of music that we love to celebrate. Get a front row feeling for what the Rock Hall has to offer, visitors and locals both. <laughs> this is so wonderful to have you on the red carpet. Thank you. Thank um, so you're, this is not your first time at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No, it's my second time. Yeah, uh, yeah. only the second time. Yeah. Yep. First time was kind of a big deal, it was when you were being inducted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how does it feel to be back for someone else, namely the Moody Blues? I love it, I love it because, uh, you know, I get to be a part of the, the fun part of the side rather than, when you're being inducted, you know, it's kind of a nerve-wracking thing, you're kind of scared and... You're flattered and everything and happy, but still, it's kind of nerve-wracking. Yes. This is way more fun. It's a lot less pressure, huh? Yeah, and I get to get up and give a speech and everything. So you're inducting the Moody Blues yes. into the Rock Hall. What is it about the Moody Blues that just got you? I always loved them from the time I was about 16 years old. I just loved how romantic they were. I loved their spiritual message. Mm. It was kind of philosophic in a way that I could understand, you know, as a kid. Yeah. And they never really gave that up. They've always been honest and authentic. Great uh, Justin Hayward, a great songwriter. Knights in white satin, you know. I, I mean, mean, the best. Amazing. So, <laughs> and what's, also, what's not to like? All of them are really nice guys. Yeah. There's yeah. something really special and magical about being able to be in this business for 50 years and still having such a positive attitude and an appreciation for their fans. Right. And, it's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful thing to see happiness. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. Which is yeah. what their music brings to all of us, yeah. I guess. So uh -huh. it's, it's a nice little yep. Yep. cycle that we have going on here. Yes, yep. Um, what inspired you? What, which music inspired you when you were growing up? Well, of course I like the Beatles. Yes. I like the Rolling Stones. They're both featured here in the Rock Hall. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> I liked um, anything that, that was really uplifting and inspiring uh, rocked hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, speaking of rocking hard, we are also inducting Bon Jovi today. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Were you a fan of Bon Jovi? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too. They gave love a bad name. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> love is capable of giving itself a bad name if you ask it to. That, that is also true. <laughs> Do you have any sort of holy shit moments from your career that got you to where you are today? Too many to mention. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, a lot of holy shit moments for sure. Lots of things that if I had to do over again, I probably would have been somewhere else, you know. Uh huh. But, you know, that's what, at the end of the day, that's what tells you that you lived. Right. And, uh, you know, the wrinkles, the scars, the ups and downs, you know, that's, that's life. I so... I'm not scared of that. No, I wouldn't yeah, be either. Yeah. And these halls are filled with all of those. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> That's one of the coolest things about coming here for me is I get to be around other people my age. <laughs> I 
That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see your speech. <laughs> Thank you. And I like your hair, by the way. I don't know oh, if you guys you. can see this. She's got some purple in there. Mm, it's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Thank you. you always dress amazing. Thanks. <laughs> great to see you. Thank right. you. Have Thank a you. great time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I got, I got Jerry. Ooh, ooh. Carly, by the way. I'm Carrie. Hi. Hi, Carrie. Good to see you. <laughs> we got more people coming down the red carpet. Jerry Cantrell. Hey. Ah. It couldn't be. Hello, Cleveland. <laughs> That never gets old, does it? Never it never gets old. You can you do that every it. night. You can thank Rob Reiner for that. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how you doing? Well, welcome to the Rock and Roll you Hall of Fame. You look as cold as I am. It so, is yeah. so cold. What's up, guys? We've been out here for a while. It's dripping on us. It's freezing. Yeah. But we're here because we love it. I brought the L.A. Uh, sunshine for two days, but it didn't last. You beat me yeah, back. Yeah, so. thanks a lot yeah. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're inducting some pretty great bands tonight. Yep. Um, who are you here to see? Uh, I'm really excited about the Cars and uh, Bon Jovi. Actually, I, Bon Jovi, I think, is long overdue to be here, and and they're well they're uh, well deserving of, of being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It is yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. They they've stood the test of time. Yep, Dire Straits and Moody Blues too. I really. I like mean, as all well. of them yeah. have been uh, amazing yeah. inspirations for so many people, and I feel like I mean Bon Jovi just specifically, I guess, because they that's what I grew sure. up with. You know. Yeah, I did too. Um, they they have figured out what it is that it, it means to be sort of the, the every guy yep. and bring it to us. Well, you know, it, it makes it, us feel like we succeeded somehow because <laughs> they did. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's incredible that they've had such a long career as they have and, and uh, uh, all of the different eras and songs and, and you know, uh, you know, I first became aware of them like MTV days, you know, when, when they actually still played rock and roll. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh uh, well deserved. Uh, what we got, Nita Simone too. Nita and, Simone and, and Sister Rosetta. Tharp. That's right. That's right. I that's mean, right. that woman is insanely good on the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was she a little inspiration for you then? I was not as familiar actually. I was I, I was listening to the music yesterday, and uh, that that's one artist I wasn't quite up on. But, but yeah. Very cool. Very she's, cool. She's yeah. considered an early influencer. And I, I, I feel bet. like she needs to I be bet. a constant influencer. That's why she's here. Yeah, yeah. and I feel like tonight we're probably going to introduce her to a lot of younger generations that just had no idea. That's right. She's phenomenal. That's a great thing about music. Once you put it out there, it's there to find. Somebody may not find it at the right time. They may find it later. It's out there. Somebody's going to connect with it. And that's a great thing. So, so speaking of, what, yeah. what's new? What's uh, What do you got for us? Uh, <laughs> Alice in Chains has finished a record. And we we're going to put it out this year. So uh, we're going to hit the road, I believe, uh, April 28th in Boston and work the, work the East Coast. We got uh, Europe, European dates all through the summer and then uh, West Coast in the fall. And Fantastic. I think that's when the record drops. Yeah, so, Excellent. Yeah, pretty cool. Well, I'm going to let you get out of the cold. Oh, but thank you. I, I can't say anything, <laughs> but I can tell you that there's going to be some surprises at the show tonight. So be prepared to be wowed all over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Have fun in there. Stay oh, warm. Stay warm. You Thank stay you. warm. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. New wave pioneers and heroes of the underground sound, the Cars. Experimental and catchy style has long found them fans that span generations. After a third ballot appearance, the band is now set to become a part of the Hall of Fame. Now let's uh, hear how their own musical influences created the Cars' signature, signature style. <laughs> I think my tongue is frozen. Hello? Hi, my name is Greg Hawks. I play synthesizer in the cars. My favorite group is the Three Stooges. Greetings, my name is Benjamin Orr. I play bass and I'm one of the lead singers for the cars. And this is my face. I'm David Robinson. I play drums. You're in the groove, Jackson. Hi, I'm Elliot Easton. I play Wah Wah Cacophone. And my favorite bands are New York and London. Thank you. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Rick Ocasek. And I turn confusion into a virtue. Shake it up. The Cars are an amazing band that were formed in 1976 in Boston 
But Rick Ocasek and Benjamin Orr first met in Cleveland. Benjamin Orr had played in many local bands, including the Grasshoppers. And the two of them, when they moved to Boston, found a way to take a lot of elements of the music they had been listening to, punk rock, synth pop, rockabilly and power pop, and mix all of that together into something that was very close to what would become new wave music. The Five of Us is not an obvious lineup. It's not like you'd say, oh yeah, obviously these five people are gonna form a band together because we weren't, we, A, we weren't all the same age. We didn't, like, we weren't like a band that like all went to high school together and had the same record collections and were like a gang. It wasn't like that. We were all from all different parts of the country and we all brought different influences into the group. And everybody, we had things that overlapped. We all loved certain things in common, of course. But then we all, each of us in our way also liked things that maybe the other guys weren't that familiar with or that were unique to that one person. Say, hey, check this out, you know. And we brought that whole, all those ingredients into this pot to make this stew. And, and it, 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 you know, just to you know, finish that metaphor, the recipe worked, you know. Starting in the late 70s, it's amazing to think of their sound. They were such pioneers. They were out ahead of many other people. It was a minimalist, stripped-down sound that used a lot of electronics, but it still held true to many of the late 70s uh, arena rock and classic rock sounds. And by the 1980s, they went on to become one of the bands that helped to shape the new MTV look and sound. The car's influence was heavily felt by the 90s alternative rock boom. In fact, Rick Ocasek himself went on to become the producer of choice for many young bands, including Weezer and Bad Religion. They looked at the cars as one of the pioneers of that early new wave sound that could be twisted and turned into something new in the alternative era. And that sound is still influential today. Godmother of rock and roll. Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Little Richard, and so many others all named her as one of the reasons for their own rock careers. Sister Rosetta Tharp will be entering the Hall of Fame this year as an early influencer, and we're looking back to see how far her influence has extended from our 1950s onwards. I hear, oh, somebody's coming for Sister Rosetta right now. Brittany Howard is walking down the carpet. Hi, Brittany. <laughs> how are you? Hi. Oh, I'm doing great. How are hello, you? Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to a very cold and rainy Cleveland. Feels great. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have a jacket on. No, we wanted to look nice. <laughs> yeah, well, it does matter because we're here on the red match. carpet and we need to be fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, tell me, tell me, oh, tell me your name. I'm Jesse Lapser. Hi. Oh Welcome to the Hall of Fame. Thank you. Um, so today's kind of a really big deal. Yes, it is. Who, who are we presenting? Would you like to say it? I am presenting the award for Sister Rosetta Tharp. It's who my honor. happens to be one of the coolest women I have ever um, she's watched in my life. <laughs> yeah, she's like amazing. I'm so excited for like everyone that's going to tune in to get to know who this woman is. How did you discover her? I, I was playing an SG Custom, you know, it's a type of guitar, and everyone was telling me, oh, Sister Rosetta Tharp plays one of those. And I'm like, who's that? <laughs> Checked it out, and I was like, oh, wow. That is, I'm trying to learn more about that. So it's like a huge honor for me to be here today to accept it on her behalf. So you got to do a lot of research then. Did you find anything in your discoveries when you were writing your speech? I'll just say that we have a lot in common. <laughs> like what? What was the one thing that stood out? Uh, she broke uh, almost all the rules. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do that. I like to do that. <laughs> Isn't it more fun when you do it that way? Life's more interesting. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I mean, when you have to stay within the lines, nah, that's not rock and roll, baby. That's not it. <laughs> so are there any other um, similarities, do you think, between what you do and what she did? You know, when it comes to my guitar playing, 
it, um, I just play how I feel. It's not a technical standpoint. And I think that's exactly how she plays. She plays from the very soles of her feet all the way to the top of her head, and mm -hmm. she is the instrument. And that's how I feel about the instrument as well, you know. Um, are there any particular songs that you think people should listen to first, maybe? Yeah, start with That's All. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, are you looking forward to anything else going on this evening? Oh, I'm, I'm excited to see everybody play. Um, really excited to meet Ms. Lauren Hill. So. <laughs> Maybe she'll be here, perhaps. <laughs> There's going to be some pretty amazing performances at the show tonight. That's right. Not all of them have been announced yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, we're not giving anything away. <laughs> nah, nah, we'll get it out in post. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you Go so much. Go stay warm, and I'm looking forward to your speech. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Great to meet you. All right, we're going to go right back to uh, introducing you a little bit more to Sister Rosetta Tharp. Here's a video. Sister Rosetta first recorded at the age of 23 for Decca Records and was backed by Lucky Melinda's Jazz Orchestra. She had come from a, a gospel music tradition, but had performed with many big bands in the 1930s. Known as the godmother of rock and roll, she became famous in 1938 with the release of her song, Rock Me, and she was a star throughout the 1940s. As a gospel singer, she was accompanied by her own driving electric guitar sound, something that was fascinating for many musicians to see, her standing with an electric Gibson SG guitar accompanying herself. Didn't it rain, children? Rain, oh yes. Didn't it? Yes, didn't it? You know it did, didn't it? Oh, oh yes, how it rained. What was unique about the sound of Sister Rosetta Tharp is that she kept much of the blues foundation that had first come into modern gospel. When Thomas Dorsey originally started the modern gospel movement, he had been a blues player and there was a lot of that in the sound. Later on, he would work with greats like Mahalia Jackson to clean that up and turn it more into the modern gospel hymn that we know. But Sister Rosetta kept that blues element. And not only did she keep it in her voice and that little bit of a growl you can hear every once in a while, she kept it in her guitar playing. That imagery of her standing up in front of a choir playing an electric guitar was something that was fairly unique. She was a fascinating performer, and as a live performer, she drew huge crowds who came to see her along the gospel highway um, and wanted to hear her perform live. This train is a clean train. This train. This train. Her music and sound influenced many of rock and roll's originators, including Elvis Presley, Little Richard, Johnny Cash, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Elvis Presley decided to include some of her original compositions in his 1968 comeback special. Johnny Cash talked about her voice as being one of the most influential voices for him. And Jerry Lee Lewis even performed one of her songs during his audition at Sun Records. Her influence can be heard on an entire generation of British guitar players, including Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Keith Richards. It's no doubt that Sister Rosetta Tharp is an early influence and an influence on the sound of rock and roll music. the Revolution Series. Here you go. Hey, baby. 
you probably have a favorite album. That Desert Island record you just can't imagine life without. The one tied to life-defining moments. That collection of songs that inspired you. The music that changed you. These are the stories of those albums. These are revolutions. Nothing flashy, nothing fancy. It's rock and roll stripped of all pretense. Rock and roll's flamboyant guitarist Jimi Hendrix saw endless possibility where others saw musical limitations. Ken tapped into the generational malaise and apprehension that had boiled over into the angst-ridden grunge movement. If Madonna spent the 80s detonating sexual boundaries, then she doubled down on her provocative stance with the release of 1992's Erotica. Emotionally and sonically, Automatic for the People added to the band's already complex vision with its many shades of gray. Today, the album remains a touchstone for countless modern rock and pop bands. Artists and listeners have both identified with Fleetwood Mac's honest portrayals of relationship drama. And the al- even 50 years after its release, the album continues to hold on to its revolutionary reputation. How you doing? What's happening? What's up? How you um, doing? It's cold, it's rainy, and we're on a red carpet. Yeah, we it's, are. It's what we do. <laughs> yeah, you know, the show must go on. Um, welcome to the Rock Hall. Thank you, thank you. It's thank kind you of a big me. deal this year. Oh, every year is a big deal. It's true. Yeah, you know, anyone getting inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a big deal. Um, so you guys are here for Sister Rosetta Tharp. And uh, Nina Simone. And we're, doing Nina du- Sim- we're doing double duty. Oh, yeah, are, are you duty. giving away secrets already? Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know you're, you're going to have to find out tonight. Um, okay, so I know that I have just recently discovered Sister Rosetta Tharp, and I, uh-huh. I feel like the world needs to know more about this woman. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm on the, 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 the voting uh, member board that nominates the audience, artist, and, you know, She's been on our wish list for at least the last 12 years. So, so. what took so long? Do you think, why, why is now the right time? Um, I was just as shocked as the world <laughs> was to see it, you know, because I was arguing, like, let her get in as an earlier, influ- you know, early influence. Because even, like, Howlin' Wolf and there are other acts that are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that didn't get voted in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they told us just trust the process, which I didn't believe, but sure enough, it happened, so. You and know, now we get, to, we get to celebrate probably one of the coolest women I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, the world gets to know. <laughs> she, she invented fuzz guitar, so, you know, the, the, world, the world gets to know. The first time I ever saw her, I see this woman walking across a train station, a platform. Oh, and, and, and the UK. And she straps on the guitar, and I'm like, where is this going? Yeah, yeah. And then she just lets out the biggest, crunchiest electric guitar whale I have ever seen. Oh, she's highly influential, and, you know, we're, we're, we're very honored to be honoring her tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, Nina Simone. Absolutely. Yeah, that too. Well, and that's, we have members of her family here today. Her brother's her here. Her brother's here, yeah. And her niece yeah. is here. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. I wish that Nina could be here. Yes. <laughs> but she's here in spirit. So, you know, it's, it's good that uh, her, her family's here to uh, see her get honored. And um, we hope we do her justice. Absolutely. Um, can you give us a little hint? Where you're no, absolutely. Uh, no secrets. No secrets. No yeah, secrets. Okay. No secrets. You talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think people were shocked to see us here. <laughs> now we're we're part of both uh, tributes, and there's surprises uh, galore. So you guys are going to be doing a Bon Jovi cover? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, we're from the tri-state area. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Thank uh, you so thank much you so for much walking for the carpet. Appreciate it. We'll see okay. you inside. Have fun. Okay. We'll see you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm going to be sticking my hands in here. <laughs> Hi, how are you? 
I'm Carrie. Oh, oh my God, I'm so cold. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are we live? Hi, you guys. All right, we have the Dire Straits getting out of their van right now. This is very exciting. <laughs> and Dire Straits significant to others. Hello, hello. How are you? Carrie, hi. How you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, you guys. Dire Straits, John Isley, Alan Clark, and Guy Fletcher right here. You're being inducted right tonight inducted. here. Thank you. Um, it's happening. You guys you. did it. You officially, you worked hard enough that we're now going to just, you know, commemorate you forever in a hall. Well, thank you. We're very, <laughs> very honored to be here and very pleased to be here. I'm sorry there's only three of us, but three's better than none. I'm going to take what I got and be very, very <laughs> happy. And I know these guys are pretty happy Hello. about the Dire Straits being here. Oh, they're they're daring the cold and they're daring the, the rain and yeah, the sleet yeah, yeah. and the snow. I don't know what else is happening Isn't that here. normal? <laughs> it's just like England, yeah. Normal for Cleveland, huh? I guess so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so what does this feel like for you guys? Is this? It feels pretty weird right now, but uh, uh, you know we've been uh, doing it for forty odd years, so uh, it's kind of nice to, for it to come round. Yeah, you deserve it. And join the club. Um, yeah. I have to say that um, money for nothing. Okay. I mean that that's how I was introduced to you guys. Yeah. That was, it's like MTV, it was like the, the perfect quintessential song. Yeah. You guys are forever now, just pretty much the coolest thing that ever happened. Wow, that's a, that's a great compliment. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Only truth. <laughs> it was, uh, I think it was just good timing. Perhaps. You know, uh, the album came out and uh, Money For Nothing came out and MTV came out in Europe and it was worldwide. The whole thing knitted together and bang, you know. Just like that. Just it, like it was that. just yeah, like yeah. that. You just guys, like it didn't that. take any hard work. It just purely took some timing. Well, you got to have a good song to go with it, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that helps, huh? And thankfully, we had a good songsmith. So, how did you keep putting together all these great songs? What was the magic? Songs. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he had a. He always had a great song. So, if you've got a great song, it's not that difficult, honestly. It really... It's really not that hard to be awesome, huh? If you've got a song, <laughs> it's hard to write a, write a great song. Okay. That's the hard bit. Yeah, but then you've got to have a good band to play it. That's true. See, Which taking the credit where it's due. Well, you know, it's all part of the it's all part of the system. You know, if you haven't got a good band to play the songs, it's not going to work. Okay, yeah. now obviously the Rock Hall is filled with um, many many legends. Yeah. So who were you guys inspired by? Oh my God, where do you start? <laughs> The Beatles. Beatles, yes. Who? I'm sorry. Who? What was that band? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that little band, right? Well, you know the Stones, Elvis, Chuck Berry. Uh, for me, J.J. Cale, Dry Cuda, Bob Dylan, big, big influence. Yeah. Big influence. Still is. Van Sister Morrison. Sister Rosetta Thorpe. <gasps> yeah, there we go. So we've been talking about her all night, and obviously, yeah. rightfully so, she's being inducted tonight. Yeah. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah. yeah. She's she and, and she's one of those people that I, I'm, I'm very serious when I say this. I want everyone to know who she is yeah. now. Well, hopefully now everyone will know. I hope so. I is. hope that this brings her into yeah. a lot more homes. Yeah. And us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and the Dire Straits, by the way. <laughs> is there anything that you're looking forward to tonight in particular? Dinner. Looking forward That's to good. some dinner and also <laughs> looking forward to uh, actually having a drink afterwards. Yeah. yeah. You well, know? you're not going to be drinking during? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a little well, nerve-wracking <laughs> sort of having to get up in front of all this, uh, this very important bunch of people in there and um, getting it right. Right. Do, do you have all your words? Do you have everything written down? Uh, Are your thank yous in order? Are there... Yeah. Oh, back of my hand. Oh, oh no, it's not oh, there. No. <laughs> the rain washed it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any okay. good words for these people out here and out there that are well, all... Well, thank you very much for voting yeah. for us if you did. Uh, if you didn't, thanks for voting for the other guys. We're amongst <laughs> a, a great bunch of uh, people tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for braving cars. the weather. Indeed. Moody Blues, yep. great. Thank you. It's a great group of people. It is indeed. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great you night. guys deserve okay. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes. <laughs> great to meet you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much.
right, you guys, we have Felicia Collins. She just got here on the red carpet. Hi, Felicia. Come on over. Our very wet red like carpet. This. Thank you very it's a little much. Chilly out oh, here. here, here's your microphone. Hi. Now we can talk properly. Hello. Now people can hear you. Okay. Hi. How you doing? I'm freezing. Oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> um, okay, we've been talking about this woman all night now, obviously, Sister Rosetta Tharp. She's going to be very proud tonight. Do you think she would oh, be? I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Because uh, Brittany Howard is joining us, yes. and we're both going to throw down for Sister Rosetta tonight. I cannot wait to see your performance. Oh, yeah. It's going to be, be incredible. I'll be channeling her, no doubt. Oh. That, what was it about her that just, she was so special. She rocked so hard. So hard. But she also felt like, I just want to hug her. I know. You know, if, if you put it in historical perspective, you can really understand the impact she had. Because she was a superstar, like in the 30s and 40s. And back then, the rock stars were clarinet players. Right. They weren't even playing guitar. Right. You know, so she brought that out there and showed everybody, no, we're going to rock it on the guitar. And that set it all up for rock and roll. And people don't know that, but it did. It's the truth. She really is. Yeah. She's the godmother of rock and roll. Yes, yeah, she is. I, I feel like she might even have been the creator, but I don't know. Maybe I'm giving her you too know, much. You know, it kind of, yeah, she kind of spurred it on. I mm -hmm. think other people might have added to it to bring it to the kids. But, yeah, she was there at the beginning. She was the breaking. The first module, the first molecular cell of it was she her. She was the spark. Yeah, I feel like she was breaking all the right rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was doing all the right things. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Is there one song in particular that you love more than others of hers? Yeah, the one I'm going to sing tonight. Yes. Yeah, it's called Strange Things Are Happening Every Day. It was her biggest, her biggest number. She used to always use it as her closer. So I said, I'm, I'm grabbing that one. Yeah, that's a good choice. Mm -hmm. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> are you a fan of anybody else that's here tonight? Every single one of them. Are you kidding me? Mm. Every single one. So I'm going to be walking around going, hi, <laughs> taking pictures. Are you going to be selfieing all night today? Yes. All night. Look, I got it right here. That's so good. I'm ready. You're ready to go. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I, How you I, doing? apparently Bon Jovi has just showed up. Is everybody excited for that? Hey, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. psyched. Oh, my God. This is going to be great. All right. Well, I don't want to keep you out in the cold. Thank you. It's freezing. It's cold out here. It's so nice to All see right, you. I can't wait to see you inside. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm having a great time. Oh, welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, it's, uh, we've only been doing this for 25 years. Only? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so, like, you should probably be telling me stories about that. I, I, some of them I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, tell me what you're going to be doing tonight. What are all the secrets? What's going to be happening? Well, well uh, backing up uh, Felicia Collins and uh, Brittany Howard on a... Uh, uh, a uh, little, little tribute blues song with Questlove, Paul Schaefer, and the Paul Schaefer horn section. How amazing is yeah, that band going to be? Yeah, uh, Sister Rosetta Tharp. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I, I'm super excited about today's performances. There, there's a lot of surprises that we haven't told you about yet, but this one's going to be really special, I feel like. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> well, Bon Jovi, you can't go wrong. Um, is there anybody here that you're m more excited to see being inducted? Uh, bon Jovi. Yeah. I've always been a fan of his for yeah, for all these years. And Bon Jovi is, uh, you guys, again, the, you can hear all the screams, and it's because they're here. They're here, you guys. You can get excited about this S now. Super nice guy, deserving of this award. Yeah, yes. I think so, too. Um, well, I can't wait to see you guys play. Look forward. Thank you so much for stopping by. My pleasure. By. Nice to talk with you. <laughs> Great to talk to you, too. My pleasure. Here, I'll take that in my frozen hand.
Jemmy has entered the building, you guys. <laughs> this is so cool. You can hear the crowd, they're going crazy. can feel how intense everybody is so excited right now. They're, they're going to be taking some photos right here on the red carpet. They all look amazing. And it's the original guys all back together again. And the crowd is going crazy because Richie Sambora just showed up. <laughs> This is insane. These guys are all back together for the first time. We have Bon Jovi all back together for the first time for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class of 2018. It doesn't get any better than this, you guys. Congratulations. All right, you guys, we got Bon Jovi in the house. <laughs> All right, pretty much, we, we're having a little reunion here. This is pretty much the greatest time of my life. How are you feeling? We're excited. We're very happy to be here. It's a um, wonderful night. I can't even believe it took this long to get you guys inducted, but here we are. That's right. We're here in beautiful Cleveland. And it can't get any louder. I feel like... Every, my ears are killing me. These people are great. They're great. They're fabulous. It's a spring day in Cleveland. It is. It's just a regular, warm, sunny, rainy, freezing day. Okay, because of your fans, you guys pretty much got voted, um, like, instantly. You got voted into the Hall of Fame, like, with a landslide. Thank you. I mean, our fans have been very dedicated for three-plus decades. I mean, we're still making number one records and touring the world and selling every arena and stadium out. So, I mean, it's... It's wonderful. Really. What is it that you do that is so magical? You've got us all spellbound. I don't know, my darling. We just write songs for us, and then it seems that people relate to them. It is true. I feel like when you guys succeeded, it, it gave like the every man a reason to feel good. Thank you. You did it for Thank us. You. Is that true? I did it for us, <laughs> but the us was we. Mm. You know what I mean? Everybody else, you know, felt a part of it. Is there one song or? Um, Something that you've written in the past that sort of says everything to you now? You know, it's really hard to think that there'd be just one. I mean, there's going to be half a dozen, but you can't think that living on a prayer and wanted dead or alive and, you know, always will all be mentioned the day that it's, you know, not a celebration, but the funeral, you know? But yeah, we've had a body of work. Have you had um, one holy shit moment that has st stood out? 
Oh, my darling, I've had 35 years of holy shit moments, and you know, <laughs> tonight's another one of them. Yeah, it is. I'm going to go really in and get ready one. for a rock show. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bon Jovi, you guys. Are you going to want to talk to Richie? Absolutely. Thank you. Looks like we'll be getting Richie Sambora, too. I'm doing great. Yeah, you get your own mic. I get a mic. You deserve one. I feel like. And I deserve a mic to sing for you. Oh, I get serenaded on the red carpet too. See what happens when you hang out with me? Wow, this is what happens when you hang out with an inductee. A inductee or an inductee? An inductee. All right. (laughs) Congratulations. Ah, thanks very much. Does this feel good? How could it not feel good? Does it feel awful? (laughs) No, not at all, because. You know, when you reach out through songwriting and you, you're trying to reach your fans and mm-hmm. communicate, and we've communicated very, very well with 135 million records, right. <laughs> and we played to over 34 million people. Uh, so obviously, the, uh, the songs that John and I were writing uh, got through to people and showed people, I really believe, that, um, you know what? We share more humanity in this world as people than we don't. You know what I mean? We feel the same way. We go through heartbreak. We go through tragedies. We go through sickness. We go through love. We go through all of that stuff. So uh, I've been lucky enough to have the profound opportunity to be able to be a big part of that, man. And then this is just like people going, hey, you did it. You know what I mean? So It's a little cherry on top. A big cherry on top, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? If somebody would have told me when I grew up that any of this shit was happening, I would have been like, yeah, right, you know. Um, for whatever it's worth, if anyone had told me when I was growing up doing air band to you guys, running around my house, rocking the neighborhood, that I'd be standing here uh, while you're being inducted, uh, that's wonderful. Thing. Never would have believed thing. it in a million years. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you very much. We're very happy too, and uh, that's the way it goes, man. We just had a great, lucky life, and we worked really, really hard. You know, the, one of the hardest things to do is find four guys with you that are dedicated and talented and are willing to go through the trenches and the cyclic changes in the music business and all that kind of stuff and the tragedies in each other's lives. I mean, we've been bet deaths, born, married, divorced, this, that. I mean, you know, it's a family, really. That's what it comes down to. You yeah. see the kids, how beautiful they are. Oh, my God. You guys came We're with so a whole entourage. Lucky. It's wonderful. So lucky. My daughter was like, oh, my Lord. I go, Can you stop that girl now? She's looking too good. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for stopping by. I I know you, they need to get you inside. Unprompted. I mean, this is what you Unprompted. do. Unprompted. I didn't even do that shit. <laughs> Ow! I didn't even do that. Bon Jovi class of 2018. 2018, baby. <laughs> Thank Bye, you guys. So much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Well, surprise, surprise. They just keep coming. You guys, the killers are here. Oh. Woo! Oh, look at that. Are we supposed to work? No. Oh, look at over here. All right, so uh, you guys are going to be inducting some people tonight, some people that actually mean a lot to me. Yeah. The Cars. The Cars were like the coolest band on the planet. Yeah. yeah. They were like, they, for, I mean, it was new wave right when it needed to be different. They were, and yeah, and yeah, they were mainstream, but they, they didn't behave like mainstream artists or, you know, or bands. And so it was a unique situation that they were in. And, was, and they were able to be really cool and really massive. And it was the first cassette that I ever had was a Cars cassette. And so I'm, it's just a real honor to be here. Well, what was the favorite song? What's your favorite? I like Double Life. 
Ooh, double life style. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in? Do you agree? Or you like something uh, different? I mean, I, like a lot of people, I think the first song I fell in love with was probably just what I needed, mm. and then of course it, it, it branches out. But you're all I've got tonight, and songs Jeez. like that start to. They have so many. It's it incredible. is amazing when you start pulling them up on YouTube and you realize that you can listen to the cars for about three days. Yeah. And know every single song. Yeah. I always have a, a Cars CD in my car. <laughs> How ironic. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Have you ever tried to walk on water like Rick? No. <laughs> Uh, they've had some great music videos. Only Rick can do it. You know, music videos are, they have some, some definitive music videos too, yeah. I, I just, I'm so excited that they're finally in the Rock of Hall. Yeah, that's about, thir what is it, like 15 years too late. They, they, should have been, they should have been inducted a long time ago. But at the same time, right on time. Yeah, right on time. Because <laughs> now they get you to induct them. If yeah, it was 15 cool. years ago, maybe you wouldn't have been here. Yeah, that's true. true. I was 12. Is there anybody else that that's in the Rock Hall that you're um, a, a big fan of tonight? I mean, just in general, like that. Everybody thing is, tonight. It's corner yeah. to corner. I mean, tonight's got a great, a uh, great list of bands. And um, did you notice that I was just talking to Bon Jovi? Yeah. <laughs> you were talking to Richie. <laughs> Sam Bora. Get it straight. Sam um, Bora. I had John first and then Richie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got them both. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, just about everybody I'm sure that's that's ever accepted the honor has has had some kind of influence on us, um, you know, down the line. Yeah, um, and I heard there's going to be some special performances this evening that we're not really allowed to talk about, but there's oh. going to be some pretty awesome things going on. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're working on it. Uh huh. Yeah, maybe, maybe you'll like, you know, put Where something the together camera? for me. Oh my God! It's, it's the it's pink eye back to it the whole thing, time. Right there. Like, oh. <laughs> Check out his uh, right. derriers. Right. How's it going? Right. Right. Is it? It's really cold. Oh, um, it's really cold. Are you sorry. okay? I'm Are you doing freezing, all right? I'm but sorry. They tell me that the show's going to start soon, so okay, yeah, we got to get out you there. You guys have to go right. inside. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bad way. Nice to be here. Welcome to Cleveland, Howard. It's good to have you. Oh, I'm reading your. It's it's very very nice to have you. Yes, um, and it's very cold. I was I was told that I have to call you Sweet Love or I get fired. That's my wife. <laughs> I don't call her Beth. I call her Sweet, sweet Love. Sweet Love. Yeah, you know I'm poetic too. Um, do you, what do you call John Bon Jovi then? Sweet Love. <laughs> See, that, does that He's make a, it less special or more special? He's very beautiful. I met him in 1987, somewhere around there, and I just thought he was the hottest girl I ever saw in my life. I mean, life. for yeah. real, He really right? was. He really was. Um, and by the way, I heard that today is officially Bon Jovi Day. It is at our house. You should see. <laughs> I walk around. I hairsprayed my hair for an hour because of, in, in honor of Bon Jovi Day. It's it looks awesome. good. How yeah. much Aquanet do you go through? Aquanet. <laughs> I destroyed 50 ozone layers. Ow! All right. Amazing. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Are you We're going moving. inside? You're going to be inducting Bon Jovi this evening? I will. What, I will. What was, how, how, what, how far back do you guys go? Um, probably 30-something years when the guys first started out. I, um, I used to have them on my radio show. I liked them. And they weren't uh, huge stars yet, but um, you knew they were going somewhere. Uh, it didn't take much to prognosticate. I knew they would do okay. And now they got you introducing them on probably one of the biggest days of their life. Yes, yes, and uh, I'm excited to do it. I'm actually honored to uh, be with them. They, um, not only are they really nice guys, but uh, I'm a big fan of rock and roll music. After all, I made my living playing records. And um, Back when they were still records. Yeah, I can remember, um, I think it was Bad Medicine. It was like over six minutes long. I could go to the bathroom, get my news copy, read a few commercials, and pull a couple of records. It was great. <laughs> Thanks, Bon Jovi. Right, real cool. Thank you, Bon Jovi. Love these guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.
thousands of live shows in arenas across the globe, a dedicated multi-generational fan base, and strings of hits across the charts. There's no one out there that hasn't been rocked by Bon Jovi. The New Jersey powerhouse is entering the Hall of Fame today, and we're watching now what got them to the top. Shout to the heart, and you're too late, darling. You give love a bad name. Rock and roll is uh, a way of life. It's uh, you can't think of it as just a music form. If you if you live it, you live it. You wake up in the morning, you be brushing your teeth with it, and you go to bed with it next to your pillow at night. So it's uh, it's a lifestyle. Sometimes you can have a band that sort of, for a lot of fans, gets locked in the one time period of their career. And I feel like Bon Jovi is one of those bands. Because let's face it, between 1986 and 1988, you get Slippery When Wet and New Jersey. Two incredible albums. Songs like You Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, Wanted Dead or Alive, Bad Medicine. Uh, just huge, huge hits. And very much locked into the kind, of, the kind of vibe at the time of hair metal, right? They were sort of a metal band. You know, Richie Sambora played with this really aggressive guitar sound, and John Bon Jovi was singing with this voice that could have been in a metal band if it wasn't so bluesy. Um, and they get locked into that look, that style they had, the long hair and the, and the jackets and scarves and all these things. But the key to Bon Jovi is they continued to be an incredible band because at the center of what they were about were great songs. That's why when you hear Richie Sambora and John Bon Jovi do an acoustic version of Wanted Dead or Alive in a totally different sound than the original, it still works. It still sounds like a great song, because it is. They were out there touring the world for years, playing for massive, massive audiences, and even coming into areas that sounded more like country or sounded more like, you know, other styles, they were able to keep the center of what they were all about. And that ability to be great musicians and kind of outlive that first initial flash of success that you had. That's really something pretty amazing. And at the same time, those songs from the 80s still hold their own with some of the best songs of rock and roll. rock and roll on stage together and we have a good time man we look at each other and we're happy to be there you know we're happy to play with each other Bon Jovi's a family uh, and it's like your brothers you know Cowboy. So basically, I thought, if we sold a million records, I'd be the happiest kid on earth and I could get off the ball. It's been a dream come true now, 12 million records, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Well, actually, we only sold 2 million records and my mom bought 10 million records, so. And I rock them all, cause I'm a cowboy, on a steel there when they said that Bon Jovi wasn't going to happen. You were there when they said that we were a fluke. You kept coming back for more and telling the critics and all the authority, whoever they are out there, no. <laughs> so to our fans, thank you. Tonight's induction ceremony will feature the newest class of inductees and special guests and performers who take the stage together, creating unforgettable rock moments. Fans watching will have the chance to share the night too on May 5th, 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on HBO. Check out this trailer to see who's going to be a part of the biggest rock night. Celebrate power, passion, and soul as music's elite gather to honor rock's royalty. Bon Jovi, The Cars, Nina Simone, The Moody Blues, Dire Straits, Sister Rosetta Tharp. The 2018 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Induction Ceremony. With appearances by Howard Stern, Mary J. Blige, Ms. Lauren Hill, Brandon Flowers, Ann Wilson, Stevie Van Zandt, Brittany Howard, Andrew Day, The Roots, Paul Schaefer, Felicia Collins. Only on HBO.
Yeah, I will. I will. I'll come back. Andre Day has just gotten to the red carpet. Hi. Hi, Andre. How are you? Great. Hi. So do you come, oh, thank you. come here. We need to show off this outfit, first of all. You look amazing. Do you have like seven wardrobe changes tonight, too? Two. Okay. Only two. Yeah. Only two. It's all in the details. Okay. Now, you're going to be performing Nina Simone this yeah. evening. Yeah. Um, she was such an amazing woman, such an incredible talent. I mean, how do you feel? Are you going to go up there and embody her? Are you, what, what are you, how's it going to be when you get up there? Um, I mean, yeah, I think, I think I, she is probably one of my biggest inspirations in why I do music, why I do it the way I do. Mm. Um, and, and so I feel like I'm always trying to embody her in a sense. She, she really did kind of raise me in music. And so, but also just paying tribute, you know, honoring her legacy, honoring what she stood for, what she sacrificed, you know. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, just hoping to, to honor her tonight and show how she's inspired me as an artist. I feel like she could have been inducted for the last hundred years, <laughs> but I almost feel like it's more perfect that it's happening right now. Especially right now. I think it's a lot of her lyrics and her songs are unfortunately still relevant, but fortunately we have her entire sort of pantheon of music to encourage us, to inspire us, and to... And it's and it's revelatory in a way that you know that this really is our duty to be standing up and to be the the hands and the feet and so, but yes, that was my first reaction when they're like Nina's being inducted. I'm like she's not in the Hall of Fame, right? Already. How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's good tonight. Tonight we get her. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of anyone else that's being inducted tonight? Um, oh yeah, oh definitely Moody Blues. Oh, yeah. yeah, and actually the producer I did my first album with worked with the Moody Blues as oh, well right. too. So um, Moody Blues definitely Bon Jovi you know the cars everyone these are like legends they I feel are. like we sing their songs all the time so and you know Rosetta Thorpe you know every yeah absolutely <laughs> oh yeah I'm a I new fan like, oh, and, oh good oh, good I want the world to know who she I is I think that's what I love about these shows so much is they get people new audiences are yeah. now familiarized with her with Nina so it's it's amazing I'm a fan of everybody tonight yeah it's gonna be great yeah <laughs> I'm an observer just as much as I am a performer and there's gonna be such great performances tonight and <laughs> I can't wait for everybody to, and there's gonna be some surprises too yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Lots Surprises for me, too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know everything that's going on. So. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. stopping by. Go get warm. All right, I will. The show's going to start like any minute, so you guys... Yeah, when did yeah. the temperature drop? It was yeah. like 70 earlier. As soon earlier. as you got I to like, Cleveland. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you Appreciate so much. You. Thank you. I look Thank forward you so to much. seeing you in there. Thank you. Oh, my God, your nails are cool, too. Thank you. <laughs> Just keeps getting cooler. I had to do something. Amazing. All right, Rock fans, thanks for tuning in with us to the first ever official red carpet show. You made history with us, with me. Thank you so much. We're going to head inside. I'm going to get warm. You're going to see history being made on stage as the class of 2018 joins the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So make sure you head on over to rockhall.com to get live updates from the show and rewatch the red carpet.
The 33rd induction ceremony presented by Klipsch Audio will broadcast on HBO May 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. We're out. Long live rock and roll. Do I get to drop a mic?